Hi guys and welcome to episode 16 of Kent Walks. This episode, Ted and I are off to explore one of Kent's National Nature Reserves and its surrounding areas. The weather forecast isn't great, but sometimes you just need to get out. Welcome to Stodmarsh. From the car park, head west back down Lambkin Wall and at the end turn left towards and past the church and its graveyard. Where the road bends right, turn left up a no through road heading north northeast to past under Trees Farm and a lake. Towards the end of the lake, leave the obvious track cutting across a field to another track. Turn right, then left to pass Newborn's Farm, and not long after, right to join Grove Road. Turn left up the road for quite a while, and just before a junction by Elm Tree Farm, turn left to leave the tarmac on a signposted footpath. At a cross paths, turn right to veer north to appear at a road by Grove Ferry. Turn left along the road and very soon leave it again by way of the Stour Valley Walk. Follow this path as it winds its way southwest, flanking the Great Stour River, and after one and a quarter miles the path bends left away from the main river and navigates between a lake and another river-like waterway, heading back to the start. The name Stodmarsh is of Saxon origin. Stode, signifying a mare, and Merse, a marsh, alluding to its previous purpose of pasture for marshland cattle. The village has one public house, the Red Lion, initially constructed in the 15th century and subsequently rebuilt in 1801 after a fire raised it to the ground, and so I'm told does very good food. The church here is devoted to St Mary and is a fairly small building consisting of a single island chancel with a low pointed turret housing two bells. The church was built in the 12th century and remodelled in the 19th. The porch encompasses carvings known as Crusaders Crosses which are understood to be unique to Kent. National Nature Reserves give you a first-hand experience 
of England's special and diverse wildlife, and Stodd Marsh is no exception. Covering an area of almost 600 acres of wetlands, the reserve is recognised for the variety of birds that have been spotted here, with over 200 species logged. Stodd Marsh also has the largest reed bed in the southeast of England, which sustains an assortment of birds and insects. The reed beds are a tremendous asylum for migrating birds, including swallows and house martins in the summer months and starlings in the winter. Bittern, marsh harrier, kingfisher, grey-crested grebe, coot, moorhen, reed bunting, bearded reedling can all be seen too. The reserve also supports a large mixture of invertebrates and rare plants, so this truly is a place housing a huge array of wildlife. It even has a strong community of water voles. The area has been protected and managed for nature conservation for over 40 years and regardless of all the changes in land use here at Stodmarsh, it's believed that it probably now looks much like it did in medieval times. There's almost four miles of footpaths with a circular walk around the whole site as well as a wheelchair accessible sensory trails at the Stodmarsh end. In January, bitterns migrate here from Europe and feed in the reed beds and the river Stour, with eels being their favourite cuisine. When they feel threatened, they point their beaks in the air and sway to imitate the reeds. April May time is mating season for the bittern and also the marsh harrier. The female does most of the egg incubation and brooding of the chicks and it's quite possible to witness their remarkable feeding method. The male harrier calls to the female as he approaches the nest. She takes off and as he passes, gives the prey to the female in mid-air. The lakes and pools are full of invertebrates and fish, from small larvae to big carp and pike. In early summer, the fish splash around in the shallows of the main lake and swim into the reeds to spawn. In autumn, the water level is purposefully lowered in some of the lakes and pools to expose the bare mud for migrating, wading birds. Well, that concludes another Kent Walks adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.